inside Tesla's $5 billion Gigafactory. Tesla currently has five known Gigafactories, three of which are active and responsible for the mass manufacturing of the components of its famous electric vehicles. There's Giga Nevada, Giga New York, Giga China, which are all active and pumping out Tesla EV component units at an alarming rate, while its latest factories like Giga Berlin and Giga Texas are still under construction and slated for active use later in 2021. The most noticeable of these factories is the Gigafactory Nevada, not only for being the first of the manufacturing facilities, but also due to its heavy cost and huge manufacturing capacity. In this video, we'll be taking you on a virtual informative tour around this multi-billion dollar facility to show you what makes it the titan of the existing Gigafactory lineup. If you're waking up in the Gigafactory 1, aka Giga Nevada, for the first time, you might think that you're in a futuristic factory where advanced tech is being manufactured by a self-sustaining artificial intelligence. And you wouldn't be wrong. The Behemoth facility is a technological marvel spanning over 5.3 million square meters in Reno, Nevada, where it has been strategically placed true north for GPS and solar energy equipment efficiency. The factory was born of Tesla's dream to make electric vehicles cheaper and more affordable by reducing manufacturing costs through the self-production of its batteries. Musk describes this literal powerhouse as the machine that builds the machine, and that's not an overstatement at all. Although existing since June 2014, the Gigafactory 1 is still under construction, with barely 50% of its original plan carried out, yet it has broken a few global structural records already. The Gigafactory Nevada is the biggest lithium-ion manufacturing plant in the world, not just in terms of land mass, but production as well. In fact, it currently produces more lithium-ion batteries than all the others combined. A walk into the factory area of the facility would reveal that a portion of it is being handled by Panasonic. This cooperation was secured by a $1.6 billion investment from Panasonic, which is also Tesla's exclusive battery cell supplier for its highly successful Model 3 and Model Y EVs. In the factory, there's a point where both companies meet. This section is lined by a good number of automated vehicles conveying power cells from Panasonic to Tesla. These slow-moving transport vehicles are called automated guided vehicles, and they go about their businesses as part of a fully automated process with no human intervention at all. They transport the power cells from Panasonic to Tesla, where thousands of these cells are fitted into the individual power packs needed to run the average Tesla EV. The factory is about 90% automated, especially in areas where the processes are quite repetitive. Due to the fully automated nature of the facility, it's able to operate 24-7. This is not to mean that there aren't any human employees on site. The factory boasts of over 7,000 workers, a move by Tesla to create job opportunities in the surrounding location and the country at large. Besides, there are manual low-risk labors that are easier to be done by humans. But if humans are allowed to work in an almost fully automated environment, then there are bound to be some public safety concerns, such kinds that Tesla has avoidably encountered in the past over the Gigafactory 1. Still, Tesla appears to prioritize the safety and well-being of its massive Gigafactory human workforce. There are warning and instructional signs all over the facility. There's also a large capacity cafeteria that caters for a wide variety of meals and drinks to be consumed by the employees at designated breaks. Tesla is practicing what it's preaching concerning the adoption of sustainable and renewable energy by focusing on a completely renewable energy setup for the Gigafactory. This is made possible by the massive installation of solar panels on the roof of the facility. The full expanse of the solar panels, just like the rest of the facility, are still unaccounted for, since there's just about 30% of them installed. There's an installation project of 200,000 solar panels on the rooftop of the facility, and when completed, the Gigafactory 1 will not only have fulfilled its commitment to environmental protection, it'll also boast of the largest rooftop solar array in the whole world. The factory houses conventional and manufacturing equipment that have been optimized and redesigned to have lesser energy demands by avoiding fossil fuels and increasing energy efficiency. The battery manufacturing process is one that requires intense heat-generating energy, which means that the facility has to be cooled down to maintain bearable and functional temperature. To address this, the Gigafactory's cooling system is specially optimized to work with its environment. 
At night, when it's colder, the cooling system generates and conserves enough coolant liquid to be used the following day, thereby reducing the consumption of electricity and water considerably. At the end of the whole manufacturing process is an automated warehouse, where the fully assembled batteries are packaged and ready to be transported to the Tesla Automobile Assembly Plant in California, just about five hours away on road. The slowness in completing the Gigafactory Nevada is a tactical decision by Tesla to ensure that it continues to meet the latest demands for innovation before its completion. The groundbreaking facility is truly a sight to behold, and by its completion will not only be one of its kind, but a pace setter for other Tesla Gigafactories. The factory's efficiency has truly helped reduce manufacturing costs, since batteries are the most expensive parts of electric vehicles. It's even better that the structure behind this cost reduction is setting a lot of good examples that, if followed by manufacturing facilities around the world, would reduce carbon emission and protect the environment. The Gigafactory One is proof that Tesla does not only care about the sustainability of its products, but the process behind manufacturing them. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed the tour and we'll be coming back for more in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. See you next time.